So in the last video tutorial, we have created an application DB context class that inherits from identity DB context. And this will help us to manage the identity specific tables in our SQL server. This class will help us to communicate with our SQL server using the default connection. Basically, the class will call the base constructor and the base constructor will connect to the database using this default connection. Now, what we have to do in order for this base constructor to connect to the default connection, we need to create a connection with the name default connection in our web.config file. So let's go ahead and create our default connection in our web.config file. Just under the system.web closing tag, I'm going to create a connection string. within my connection strings I am going to specify some code first of all I need to create the add tag and after I've created the add tag I need to specify some attributes the first attribute is the name of my connection stream the name of my connection string is default connection as specified here in my application DB context class because the base constructor will try to search a connection string with this name go ahead and name your connection class default connection connection string as default connection you can name it whatever you like I'm just choosing the name default connection now we have to specify another attribute called as connection string now this connection string will help us to locate the database and the data source so how do we do it first of all we'll type our data source Now to find out your data source, you can open Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and then click on the Connect Object Explorer and then you can see on this Connect to Server window your server name. Your server name is basically your data source. If you click Connect, you will be connected to your SQL Server database. So now you can provide your server name as your data source. The other method to find out your data source is to go to View, go to Server Explorer, then click on this sign here which says SQL Server Object Explorer, and then under this window you can see your data source. You'll have your local DB. And you will have your Windows authentication as well. So in this case, I'm using my desktop forward slash SQL Express. You can choose either one of these and you can provide it as your data source. After you have provided your data source, you need to provide the initial catalog. Initial catalog is basically the name that you want to give your database. I want to name my database as ASP.NET Identity. Once again, you're free to name whatever you like. In my case, I'm using this name ASP.NET Identity, which matches my project. Another thing that you need to add is integrated security equals to SSPI. When integrated security is set to SSPI or to true, that means we are using Windows account credentials for the authentication process. If you are using integrated security as false, then you need to provide the username and password for your database. After we have set our integrated security equals to SSPI, we need to set one last attribute, which is the provider name. The provider name, we can set it to system.data.sql client. System.data.sql client is a .NET library for SQL Server, since we are using SQL Server for our database. So that's it for our connection string. In the next video, I will show you how you can enable the entity framework code first migration that will help us generate the code in order to update the database schema for our domain model. So 
have a good day and watch the next tutorial bye